So today we're going to look at an all-in-one arpeggio pattern. So an arpeggio pattern that combines a number of patterns into one exercise um, to be as efficient as possible and to cover as much ground as possible. So watch the video for free and um, you can pick up the, the exercise from the video. But if you're interested, this comes from my 20 favorite exercises book. It's number 15, all-in-one arpeggio pattern. It's also in my larger um, technique book as well. Um, I have two technique books, the 20 favorite exercises with tab and the larger, uh, much bigger technique book that's notation only. There's links for those um, books underneath the video. So let me demonstrate the exercise for you, just like play it for you. And then um, I'll talk about some tips about how to approach it and why I use this exercise quite often. proceed all the way up to the 12th fret and then back down. So um, it uses a number of, of patterns. So let me just show you the exercise. We're going to be using the top four strings. The thumb mm -hmm. will always play on the fourth string. The I finger will always play on the third string. The M finger always on the second string. And the A finger always on the first string. So as I'm calling out fingerings, you don't have to think about string numbers. They're always going to be on those strings. So I'm going to break it into um, four groups to show you the pattern. Let's just do it with open strings first. So we'll do P, I together, and then M, A, M, I, and then P, M together, A, M, I, M, and then P, A, M, I, M, A, and then P, M. So, you know, the top voice of this exercise is literally just going I am A M I M A M I M A M I M A M. But because every five notes the thumb interjects, we end up with a different finger played with the thumb each time. So it's covering a lot of ground because you could just do this exercise. Uh, that's, the, that's the first pattern essentially. But then there's another pattern that you would do other pattern. So there's four patterns all combined into one here. So by practicing it, you cover a whole bunch of patterns all at once. So I'll do it really slowly. And then you start again. I'm using a diminished seven chord. You could use any chord you want. Um, I'm just using this diminished seven chord um, just to like add some flavor to it and to like work my way up to just increase the register, um, just to keep my, my mind stimulated, I guess. with students a lot because you know like some students don't have a ton of time to practice or they don't go through like a ton of arpeggios so ones like this um, cover a lot of ground really quickly especially if I have like a busy teen student or something like that um, and I'm just gonna give them some scales and like an arpeggio pattern and some slurs I just want them to do a, a barre exercise like one of each kind of technique then I'll often assign this pattern just to like make sure they're getting something in there in terms of tips, I don't have too much to say. Make sure that your thumb and your finger plays together at all times. Never this. You know when it's delayed like that? Make sure they're played exactly at the same time. Um, some people have a trouble like thinking in groups of five, but if once you get used to the pattern, you'll be just fine. Just practice it as as individual groups first. And you'll learn it very, very quickly like that. Keep the right hand very still. So just keep it very static. Make sure that you're, you're up high enough that your fingers can move from the upper joint. 
And that your thumb is in front of your fingers enough that it can move independently of the fingers as well. Especially when you play P-I, you don't want them to coll um, collide with each other, right? So you, you want to keep your tone pretty loud in your right hand, but also you want it to be relaxed. It's partly an endurance exercise if you're going to go all the way to the 12th fret and all the way back. That means you're doing the pat the the whole exercise uh, 24 times, right? So um, it's kind of an endurance exercise. I won't do the whole the whole exercise. Um, so that's pretty much it. It's just like a really good combination exercise. Um, just make sure that you've covered all the previous exercises in the book. This is number 15, so if you've covered everything up to this point, I don't think you're going to find this tricky at all. And it's a great pattern just to, uh, especially as a warm-up exercise. Like if you just have, want to do like a five-minute warm-up before you have to run on stage or something, um, it's a great one to just get the hand really working.